so a couple things about about this chart. Um, so he sees this stuff. Um, he gets short right after, um, and then I think what happened is that you know he he covered a bit too soon, and um, just like scaling in, you can scale out of a trade as well, right? So I think the big thing with this one is really for a lot of people, um, you know, because like we talked about this in the podcast, it's going to come out as well. Whereas you can scale out of a trade just like you've scaled into a trade. And so we've got the stuff move, you know, he waited for a little bit of a pop and then right away, he just was kind of out. And, um, you know, you can save a bit for lower, um, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. So, I mean, I would just say like, maybe you want to kind of, uh, you know, I know that he's covering at support and he's taking 10 cents, but after we get a massive slam on this, like you should be expecting the stock to kind of bounce a little bit and then go lower. And then I think because he took it off, uh, he got into a little bit of trouble of starting to short in a bit too low. And then he ended up getting stopped out later on. So I think it's, it's good to be really like cognizant of your emotions and say to yourself, okay, I know that I have, uh, missed a trade or, you know, missed a little bit he didn't miss a trade, but he missed out on like some more profits. So I need to be extra patient and wait for this kind of uh, pop if that's my plan to kind of start to short again at VWAP. Um, I mean, in this situation, I think like uh, as far as the MIC process goes, I would have just taken, uh, you know, I would have just taken the, the short on the pop and then waited for it to kind of go lower, cover, cover. And then that's really it. That's your trade. It's all done, uh, you know. As far as the kind of grind back, I think he just got short too low because he missed out on this extra profit. So, I mean, just always be aware of your emotions and kind of how you're feeling. And uh, that can go a long way as well. Yeah, it, it's the same thing. I, it looks like a lot, a little bit of chasing. He missed the first part because he didn't have fantasy orders out in the lines. Um, so he hit it, went down, hit it again. And then I agree. I, I took this trade and it was the first just 10, you know, five minutes. You hit the top, it went down, you got out, and it was it was nothing left. He could have maybe had a little on the bounce, but yeah, his ads were, I missed that big move, it's gonna go again. Mm. Um it's just a tough, that's just a tough one. You got to be prepared. That's where you I, the only thing I would say is set your fantasy orders 10 minutes before the open or five minutes before the open, have the lines there and drawn, and then you get the trade. And that's about it. Steven? I think that's about about it. I mean, a little bit of chasing, it seems like. Uh, he's entering where he should be covering, and he probably knew that, and that's why he had to like you said earlier. But you've got to be prepared for that test back to the, to the uh, line to the existing plan. And he was stopping out while the test was. So hopefully, less than The only thing I like about this tray is the stop right here. And that's probably it. Uh, other than that, I mean, you know, it's, you know, I, like for me, I never tend to do well on something like this, chasing after the stuff. It's, you know, it's, it's really tough for me, okay? Like I'm not, like that means I don't have a plan. That means, you know, I, let's see, you know, what a style is going to do and then I'm going to react, which is sometimes is impossible, okay? Sometimes it's just like the stuff just went straight up and then just went straight down and, if I don't have a plan or if I didn't have my fantasy out, it's really hard for me to kind of wait for the stuff and then chase. And then I, I, I can't really form a plan based on that. It's pretty much like, you know, trading based off, you know, maybe my emotions or like, you know, okay, so this is like huge stuff. I got to chase something here. Right? I got to chase right away. And then where would be my cover? Right. If I chase like this and then I have to kind of make a plan like more like on the fly in which I hate the most. So uh, it's just not for me. And uh, yeah, but uh, this trade, I, I, I like the cut the moment it reclaimed BWAP and that's about it. This chart, you can see the previous day on pre-market, it really conformed well, like looking at these three, 354, even 250 lines. So you got to kind of figure um, it open, it, it could push towards four. Um, you know, I don't know. I, I like to have kind of entry zones and cover zones. And I see those top uh, whole and half dollar numbers as my entry zone. So I'd be in here looking to enter around. That doesn't mean at four, but it means like maybe 370, 390, four, you know, in that range. Towards four, I'm entering. Then towards the uh, support level below, whether it's three, five or three, that's kind of my cover zone. That doesn't mean exactly 
three, it could mean 330, I'm scaling out, 320, 310, uh, et cetera. But in my head, when I do that, it really helps me a lot. And it helps me not, not get confused. So when you just look at this, how this charts form pre-market, you could clearly see like four is like your entry zone. You know what I mean? Three and 350 is kind of your cover zone. Uh, thinking about it like that keeps it simple and keeps me, keeps me focused. So that would have worked well here. That's all. Yeah, for me, bro, uh, you call it the setup first resistance, right? And tell me where the first resistance is, this one. The, the most, probably the significant resistance, right? We need to pay attention to. And if you short it that, that will be in fine. But I mean, I don't think that, like he had a plan, right? It's not like he has FOMO. I think I'm pretty sure that this is was uh, the fantasy, another fantasy here. And then when it's stuff, he added more, but you know, if you uh, draw the line like that, first resistance, you know, yeah. Uh, try to focus on the, the outer lines or like the most significant line. Uh, that's, you know, uh, where I'm trying to aim. And also, uh, when half of them are 350 and four, right? I mean, you know, if you want to short 350, it breaks, stop out, and you maybe aim it for later. Uh, because you let the stock go against you from three, four, like 40 ish, all the way to like, you know, to this high. It's like, it, this is way too wide before you even add back in, right? I mean, you don't have to go through all the pain like that. Uh, just pick a one good entry, you know, at a good kind of line, and then you can add more later. And then if you short it at four, right, let's say you add it here, your average would be here. And you would have been fine with this trade and you would still make money. Yeah. Uh, let's go back to what Harry mentioned, which was the range of kind of where this stock started. I think that's the previous close, roughly. Yeah. At the bottom there. Okay. So if we if we kind of address this and and let's say we're coming into this day and we're like, okay, I want to short this 350 line. Um, I mean, my line would have been 350. This 345 is like we're paying way too much attention to the wicks here. Like this wick, this wick, this wick, this wick, but really the area of consolidation and the magnet is 350, not 345. Like this is like, this is somebody that is like OCD or anal about being very exact. You've got to knock that away. Like the line is 350, not 345. So if we're going to look at this MIC process way, if, if I showed Bao this chart, Alex this chart, or anybody this chart, they would go, yep, 350, 370, four bucks. 